Hi, welcome back. This is the second part of the tutorial uh, about uh, Unreal Engine and actors and components. Um, we left off where we explained a bit more how the actor works. Now we deleted all the actors that we created and we're actually going to start customizing in code. So I'm actually going to go back to the uh, Visual Studio and here we're going to see two files. One is the header file, the CPP. For those that are not familiar with C++, for each class there's two files. One is the declaration of the attributes the other one, and the functions that you're going to use and if they're public, private, etc. The other one is actually the implementation of the methods. Um, in this case, uh, it's similar in structure here in uh, Unreal. You actually have a slight uh, difference is that uh, normally in Unreal you have a set of things that you normally don't see in a C++ class. Those are basically macros that are created specifically for the Unreal Engine to understand a bit more how the structure and how the class works internally so to be able to take full potential of it. So um, we're going to start by creating a shape. Actually, I'm going to just go and copy paste the code I already have uh, here so you can have an idea of how it works. Um, and we're going to start creating um, Usin component. Usin component is basically the base component for any object in the scene. Uh, and this it says that it's able to be editable in the editor and this is to be able to also be used directly through the blueprints. Um, the using components uh, is a base class for uh, a sphere which is actually what we're going to use in our uh, CPP file. In the constructor um, what we're going to do is just copy paste into creating a sphere components, I'm just going to name it root components and attach it to the root. This is very important because that's how I, the previous video was uh, there because this will be our root of all the other components that you want to attach in this um, object. I'm going to initialize, let's put it a little bit larger, the sphere radius to 10 and I'm going to attach this to actually the um, attribute that I just created for it. Uh, if you don't attach to it, I actually want to start by not attaching so you can see the difference. If you don't attach it, you cannot add it because th this is the declaration saying I'm going to be able to add it in editor. So if it basically say if our root is equal no, I have that but it's not editable. So let's me go back to Unreal, compile. Sometimes this take a bit longer Now it's done, and if I just drag and drop like I did a bit previous ago, and now I can see a sphere. Note that this sphere here, it's actually not visible during runtime or during when the game is playing. The object is there, you can see it here, it's here, but it's not visible because I just declared it as a sphere. There's no static mesh, that means there is no actually visual representation of it. The object is still there. Um, if I go now and click on root component, you can see that all the stuff that is here is not editable. So this I cannot modify it. This again is because I didn't declare it as editable. To do that, I have to assign it to a U property that is editable. Um, this is how I can do it. So if I go back, if I compile the codes, and I play it, now, sorry, I don't need to play it. Uh, the actor, I can go to root component and now things are editable. So for example, if I want to change the sphere radius to 10 to 40, it's just a simple matter of changing things there. Okay, now back to the code. Now, um, so we can actually see something, I have to attach, like I told you, a static mesh. So in the, the header file, I'm going to create a new uh, attribute called um, our shape um, and in the actor I'm actually going to just copy paste the code where it actually sets that mesh and what I'm going to do is to have again a sphere, a sphere which is visual I'm going to attach this to the root component which will be my sphere and I'm going to load something from game start content shapes shaped sphere if you go to the editor, 
you can find here that the content you have a start of content and then you have shapes and here you can find the shape sphere this path if you right click and you see for example i think is copy reference um, is exactly the same thing that it gives you here okay so this is the path where i can find my shapes okay now um, if I'm able to load it, uh, then I'm going to set it as my static mesh of the uh, sphere visual and change relative position to 0, 0, 0. It means it actually is in the center. Um, and then uh, I'll basically set the world scale to 1. So basically this is just references. I can only find the future if I want. The moment is just using the standard default, which is 0, 0, 0 and scale to 1. Okay, now well, let's see how this works. Now, if you see now, my actor also has a sphere, which is here, so that thing in the bottom, but also has a larger visible sphere. So I can actually play it, I can actually see the visual sphere in there. Now, let's try to do some activities with this. Let's, for example, turn on uh, the physics. To turn on the physics, you can just go back to the code. Actually, there's two ways you can do it. You can do it either here, um, and you can just go and select our shape, so you want to attach the physics to the sphere, the visible sphere, and click simulate physics. And if I play it, it already works. Um, but you want to turn by default to all objects that you create, so you don't have to go and manually do that. You have to edit and add this into the code. So what I have to do is here for example you say set the profile of the physics to block all um, notify if there's a collision we're going to use this in the future and finally set the physics simulations physics to true all these parameters are editable also in the editor so for example you can go to the editor and if you select the our shape this is the simulate physics generates collision hit and this is the collision preset you can set it to block all this is basically the same setting we do so the difference is that now it's automatically performed for all objects that we created so if we set a new object and drag it here all those components in our shape are already set up correctly so if i start not playing it works basically. Now, um, the base interaction of a behavior would be a collision test. Um, so, if an object my falling collides with something, uh, we're going to start seeing something happening, etc. Um, so, I'm going to start actually deleting the previous objects. Um, so our scene is getting a bit clutter. And actually, starting with a simple collision test. And for that, I'm going to just create and uh, alter existing. Um, project uh, so I'm going to alter a virtual function so overwrite the existing function that's the right term and which is called notify hit which is already part of the actor so actor already have a notify hit and if uh, our collision uh, hit is turned on that means this function will be called when there is a collision happens so basically I just have to copy paste this um, which is basically existing already from the documentation and implement it in the cpp file and just add it like this and call a my actor and notify head so this function will be called every single time there's a hit um, I'm going to just start by creating um, some explaining something to the screen or sh showing something to the scene that I'm colliding. And it's a very simple way to do it. You just call add screen debug message and say colliding. So now if I go back to compiling and if I attach a new actor into it, I'll drag a bit higher so you can see it fall. Just one for now. If I apply, when the object collides until this gets stable, it keeps hitting and saying colliding. So if I move it a bit higher up, 
Okay, that's the basic um, contraction with collision.